path even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, and by grace you are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come He might show the exceeding riches of His grace and His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Praise God. You can be seated. For just a little while tonight, uh, use this thought, this title, just, just simply God's grace. I think sometimes, and, and too many people have a misunderstanding of God's grace. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. Paul began to write, writing to the Ephesians, he said, in, in verse 8, he said, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that of your, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Of course, we all know that that it, if it wasn't for God's grace, none of us would be here tonight. That's right. But uh, uh, because of His grace, we are allowed to be here. Mm -hmm. Now, God's grace, <clears throat> translated from, from the uh, uh, Greek, is, I think it's cherish, C-H-A-R-I-S, uh, from the Greek. And, 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 I, and I like this. Listen close to what grace is. It's the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in the life. Now, maybe I'll say that again. God's grace is the divine influence upon the heart and its refle reflection in the life. In other words, if I'm really full of God's grace, if I'm really saved by grace, then it's going to reflect itself in my lifestyle. It also, it also means, means acceptable, benefit, favor, gift, joy, pleasure, and gratitude. God's grace. He said, he said, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. When we can begin to understand it's God's grace that gave me the ability or the opportunity to understand the truth of God's Word. Yeah. It's His grace that done that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's His grace that kept me alive long enough to receive the salvation of God. Come on, right? That's God's grace. That's His favor toward me. That's His benefit that He has given me. Mm -hmm. That influence, that divine influence upon my heart that reflects itself in my life. Notice now He said, you know, He said, now it's not of works. Of course, we know what I'm saying, but He. he he took care of the, the work of our salvation at Calvary. That's not what... But notice what he said. He said, for we are his workmanship, mm -hmm. created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Unto good works. See, grace is also reflected in the works that I did. See, too many people have... You know, too many people have the attitude... That, okay, I've, I've been saved by grace. Now I'm just going about my business. It don't work that way. No, you mean. It don't work that He created us to good works. Mm -hmm. He, he created, He gave, God's grace gives us the ability to bear fruit. Amen. He allowed us to do that. It's His favor toward us. <coughs> and our acceptability toward Him. First Corinthians, the fifteenth chapter. <coughs> I 
1 Corinthians 15, verse 9 and 10, Paul said, For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church. But he said, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. <clears throat> By the grace of God. He said, he said that, that, that there was a time that I persecuted the church. Mm -hmm. But he said, now by the grace of God, I am what I am. If we're anything in Jesus, it's because of the grace of God. Amen. It's because of the grace of God. He said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. In other words, in other words, when it, when it, if, it, if it's vain, then there's no purpose to it. That's right. If it's vain, if, if something's vain, that means there's no purpose to it. There's no purpose to it. He said, he, the grace which he bestowed upon me was not in vain. But look, look what he said, because of this grace. Mm -hmm. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Mm -hmm. He said, because of that grace, I worked for him, I labored for him. And now, what I am, I am by the grace of God. Right. Now, now, if somebody's still you know, in, living in sin or in sin, or you know, the bank the bank robber can't say I, I am what I am by the grace of God. <laughs> the murderer can't say I am what I am by the grace of God because they haven't received the grace of God in their life. But Paul, he said, I was persecuted church, but now what I am, I am by the grace of God. In other words, that divine influence, go back again, grace, the divine influence upon the heart. And its reflection in the life. That favor of God, that benefit that we receive from God. 1 John 1 and 14. First John 1 and 14 says this, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of Him and cried, saying, this was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So grace came by Jesus. Paul, Paul wrote in one place, that, and I'll just paraphrase it a little bit, in, in Acts, the 20th chapter, verse 24, he, he began to say, uh, he's talking about this, this that he received of the Lord Jesus to testify of the gospel of the grace of God. The gospel of the grace of God. What is the gospel of the grace of God? The gospel is the good news of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. What he, what he did for us at Calvary. The gospel of grace is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. So when we begin to understand grace came by Jesus. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus. Mm -hmm. Romans, the fifth chapter. Verse 19 says, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, 
So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Talking about Jesus. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin had reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. And, and, and then verse, then going into chapter 6, he asked this question, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Then he said, God forbid. Mm -hmm. God forbid. See, see, the grace of God is not a license to sin. Right. The grace of God does not allow you to sin. Right. Come on now. If you if you sin, you've got to ask forgiveness of it. Amen. And you've got to stop doing it. You've got to get away from it and leave it alone. Amen. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also should we walk in newness of life. See, so I I'm a girl, I, I just go, I, 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 I'm, boy, I've been saved by God's prayer. I'm just going, you know, I, I, I'm done, I'm done. You know, I don't have to do anything else now. Mm. Bible don't back that up. Hmm? Don't back it up. He said we, we, we arise to walk in the newness of life. Amen. See, grace shows me that I need to be born again. Of the water and of the spirit. That's what Jesus told Nicodemus. You gotta be born. You gotta be born. That's what what grace is. The favor of God allowed me to see my need for being born again of the water and of the spirit. See, if he hadn't given me that benefit or that favor in my life, I never would have known. <coughs> I never would have known. <laughs> For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Then in verse 14 and 15, For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but you're under grace. Now, now see, back under the law, you know, they had, they had certain laws and ordinances that they, they, they were supposed to go by. But I, mean, I feel like they've done like too many people do today. They said, well, we're we just going to go ahead and live like this, and then we're going to offer a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. See, see, that's the, that's the way, that's the way some people treat grace. You know, we, 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 we'll, we'll just live like we want to, and maybe come Sunday morning, we'll offer a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That's not how God's grace works. <clears throat> he said for sin shall not have dominion over you for you're not under the law but you're under grace and then he said it again what then verse 15 shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace and then he said it again God forbid God forbid look at 2 Corinthians Fifth chapter. Verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. 
Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If, if, if God's grace doesn't change your life, then you haven't received God's grace yet. Amen. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the spirit of reconciliation or restoration. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled, be restored to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. That means to no purpose. Again, the word vain means to no purpose. He should be. We beseech you also, don't, don't receive the grace of God in vain. In vain. To no purpose. No purpose. Now, now we know, we, we know that, that, that none of us. Are perfect. We strive for perfection, which that means strive for maturity in God. Mm -hmm. But 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 we're not so super spiritual that we don't mess up. When we when we do the best we could, you know, everybody in here is not their fault. But one of the things that, that if we're living in God's grace, we're going to know when we mess up. That's right. We're going to know when we mess up. Amen. But it's because of God's grace we can pick ourselves up and keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He told, matter of fact, he told the Apostle Paul, one of the greatest missionaries besides Jesus Christ that there ever was. He said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. In your weakness, I'm made strong. Right. Thank you, Jesus. See, the, 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 that's, one of, that's one of the beauties of God's grace. Even when we fall or fail or become weak, God's grace picks us up. But we don't, we don't willfully sin and tell ourselves God's grace is going to pick me up. It don't work that way. It don't work that way. He said, don't, don't, don't. He said, In Galatians, the second chapter. Galatians, the second chapter. In the 16th verse. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in, in, in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. In other words, we're not saved by works. Or by the work. And most time when it's talking about saved by works, it's talking about saved by the works of the law. That, that, that don't mean, I don't mean we can get saved and sit on our do nothing. <coughs> hmm? Amen. Because 
you know, there ain't nothing I can do to earn this. Well, well there, there, there's not, but that's not, that's not why. He, if, if you'll study a little closer when he's talking about works, he's talking about works of the law. Notice, notice what it said. That we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. Now notice verse 18. For if I build again the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. In other words, if I go back to the things I repented of, mm -hmm. I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, look at verse 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. You know what I would... Translated from the Greek, you know what that word first frustrated. Remember, the New Testament was wrote in the Greek language. That word frustrate means disannul, disannul, neutralize, bring to naught, reject. Paul said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. I don't neutralize it. I don't disannul it. What he's saying there, I don't do it by the way I live. I don't do it by the way I live. He said, I don't go back and try to live under the law. I don't go back and try to do the works of the law. I don't go back to my, in other words, I don't go back to my old lifestyle. I don't frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain or of no purpose. Or of no purpose. Look at Titus. One of my favorite scriptures concerning the grace of God. And, I, it, 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 and I'm, I, I'm thankful for the grace of God. I'm able to stand here tonight by the grace of God. You're able to sit there tonight and hear the word of God by the grace of God. In other words, He gave you this favor. He favored you enough to let you be in the house of God tonight. That's God's grace. Amen. He favored you enough to go to Calvary for you and die for you and shed His blood for you. That's the grace of God. Right. He favored you and gave you a benefit and the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the grace of God. Titus 2 and 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us, teaching us, teaching us. Mm -hmm. if, if I'm not letting the grace of God teach me, then I'm frustrating the grace of God. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people. What? Zealous of good works. I'm not saved by good works, but God's grace creates good works in me. <laughs> hmm? If I let God's grace do its work in my life, look at three and five. 
Titus 3 and 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, justified by that favor, by that benefit, by that gift, by that divine influence upon the heart that reflects itself in the life. That being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. God's grace gives us that hope. But God's grace is so much more saying I, than saying I believe. Mm -hmm. God's grace is so much more than saying I accept Jesus as my Savior it's so much more than that yes it is it's God's grace that allowed us to see what Jesus the work that Jesus did at Calvary <coughs> and it's God's grace that teaches us how to live mm -hmm. That we might please God. That we might please God. God, God's grace gives us the ability and the strength to live right. right. Yes, it does. Maybe I'll say it again. God's grace gives us the ability and the strength to live right. Praise God. That's all standing.